to where you are now, as well as your life and career. Okay, thank you for having me, Wendy. Who is Joy? Joy, I think I live up to my name. I'm a very bubbly, energetic person. I am very family oriented. I love people and I have a passion for whatever I do. Um, I was born in the US Virgin Islands, but I grew up in Tortola, British Virgin Islands. So this is home to me. Um, I attended both elementary and high school in the BVI before I left high school at age 15. And then I worked for a year before going to university where I studied finance in the University of Central Florida. I did both my bachelor's degree and master's there. And I got a lot of diverse opportunities at UCF. I was able to serve as the PR officer for the Caribbean Students Association. Um, I was able to serve as an intern for a small business development centers there. And I also served as a graduate and research teaching assistant during my uh, master's program there. And uh, subsequently I came home and my first full-time employment in the BVI was as a finance lecturer at the H. Lavity Stout Community College where I did a lot of teaching in the banking industry, teaching, teaching in terms of the world of finance. But at some point I wanted to get out of talking about banking to actually doing it. So after four years in the classroom, I was able to work full time in the banking industry where I've served for the last 15 years. And my last position, I took up this appointment as CEO of National Bank in 2013. And it's been a very challenging but yet rewarding um, seven years here at National Bank. And I look forward to the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. And I know that we will accomplish what we set out to accomplish. Fantastic, Joy. You said a couple of things that really resonate with me. First of all, you graduated at 15. That's like <laughs> yeah. a huge accomplishment, <laughs> right? So, so you really took take, making, creating your path seriously yeah. from a very tender age. So... And then you said as well that you've been CEO in this position from 2013, which means yeah. that you really have seen the industry yeah. go through some serious bumps and bruises, right? We've seen the de-risking initiative taking place. We saw um, the downturn of the economy, I think, would have just been taking root in the Caribbean. So mm -hmm. tell me then, what would you say are your guiding principles and success traits? I am a very faith-oriented person. My faith is very important to me. So in terms of guiding principles, I think that is something I rely on heavily. Um, I was taught from a very young age the importance of and the power of prayer. Um, in terms of other principles, I have, I believe strongly in God-given talents and that we're all put here for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I tend to, to focus on, bringing out people's strengths in terms of how they should use their strengths to fulfill their purpose and um, achieve, you know, what we set forward to, to do. Wow. Daily. Okay. It's really, really interesting. As, as I think back on a couple of the other interviews that we've done, that it's, it's, it seems to be one of those common themes that our lady leaders are certainly embracing a faith-based existence. And um, very important. Obviously, it's, it's working for the ladies that we've interviewed so far. And I have no doubt that as we continue our interviews, that we'll see that common thread even stronger. Um, so kudos to you. We're going to switch a little bit. As we go through the interview, we're going to have some really heavy questions and then we're going to have some lighter ones to make sure that we keep you engaged, right? So let me throw you a quick ball now. Do you think that your, your experience in the finance industry has been different to that of your male counterparts? And are there any specific instances that come to mind? I would definitely say that I have had different experiences versus my male counterparts. Uh, one thing that jumps out to me as a female leader, I find that females are often labeled as being very emotional, whereas our male counterparts, when they express very similar sentiments, they tend to be referred to as being passionate. Mm. Um, so I think that's a, a great difference in terms of how we are perceived as females in leadership, you know, so that stands out to me. And um, I, I think in terms of other differences, in various scenarios, I can recall people trying to refer to me as darling or sweetheart or, you know, baby, things that obviously they would never refer, you know, call their male counterparts. So it's important right. to establish a certain line of respect and, right. you know, show persons what you will and will not tolerate from, from you know, head on. 
Right, fantastic. That's a, a very interesting perspective. Um, and certainly in terms of the, um, the language that we see coming across uh, from, from every aspect within the sector. And I think perhaps this is not common only to the finance sector, but yes. generally speaking, um, the endowments that are used. Mm -hmm. But you're right, being able to determine what works for you and what doesn't, and more importantly, to vocalize it. Yes, Not to I remember, Wendy, speaking right. of experiences I will never forget, it was a, a cab round table that IMF hosted, and we were right. talking about correspondent banking challenges, and I got there a bit early, and two of the gentlemen in the forum said to me, you know, are you the secretary of so-and-so? And I said, no, I am actually the CEO. So I would never forget that their initial, you know, stereotype right. that was placed on me was she must be somebody's secretary. But it's wow. important not to let those labels intimidate you. Right. You know, if, if anything, it should drive you, you know, to, to make your presence more known when you mm -hmm. are sitting at the table to say, you know, let me prove to you why I deserve a seat at the decision making table. Fantastic. I absolutely love that. And that is so important to your success factor. Yes. Being able to not constantly feel the need to prove yourself because you are there, which means you deserve to be there. Exactly. But ensuring that when you speak, you speak from a position of authority and information and knowledge, right? Yes. So I mean that speaks to one of my own passions, which is ensuring that you're educating yourself up and retooling at every opportunity. And Joe, I know you have some fantastic stories um, in terms of retooling and making sure that you remain relevant. Yeah. Um, I think when we met, you were just at that stage of accomplishing something huge. I remember you actually got results right there when we were speaking, perhaps day one, day two, when you were ah. <laughs> yeah, Do you remember? Well, I remember most recently, I, I, I decided to go back to school recently. I didn't even tell most persons that I was going to start to study again because I probably would have gotten reactions like, are you crazy? You know, I can balance <laughs> that and still run the bank and deal with All right. But um, I did complete my second MBA last year, which is specifically in banking. Um, that was a really challenging experience, but I was happy that I was able to succeed um, with that venture. And at right. the same time, I was able to get my chartered bankers um, certification. Mm -hmm. So being able to, to balance and, 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 you know, remind myself that it's never too late to continue learning, you gotta keep investing in yourself. I was happy to have achieved that last year. Yeah. And the, the flower on the cake for me, the icing on the cake for me, Wendy, was that I was named the best student in ethics and regulation. Oh, now, wow. So, yes, for my international I didn't know platform. that. Yeah, so <laughs> when I realized I got that recognition, I said, wow, you know, because ethics is very important to me. Right. And I believe strongly in integrity. So to know that I was recognized for that particular aspect meant a lot to me. Fantastic. Congratulations. Huge Thank congratulations, Joy. It was nice that at some point I was injected into your life yes. um, in 2018 when I first came in. You were, you were one of the warmest persons that I met at that <laughs> conference. So you've left an indelible oh. mark. But That's I will tell you that there were a few things that added to that experience with you. One of them was your results were given to you, not given in, in terms of being able to, to say that this is the score, but just to say that you'd done something, your exam at that point, and you passed. Yes, and I remember, one of my first courses, yes. There you go. And I remember the, the essence of you came out because that joyous, bubbly personality was like, yes, I did it. I remember that. You know? Thank you. And, and seeing that was, was really nice. So huge congratulations. You worked for it. You accomplished it. Good for you. Yes, um, the next question then is, as a female leader, what are you most proud about? And conversely, what has been the most significant barrier in your career? Are there any learning experiences that you would share? Let's see, what am I most proud of? I would have to say, for me, being a leader is a much different concept than being a dictator. Okay. So for me personally, I would say that my ability to actually inspire and motivate persons is something that I'm very proud of. Right. Um, it goes back to even my, my classroom days before I worked in banking full time. And I don't know if my former students realize it means so much to me when they approach me and tell me, you know, they will never forget the impact I had on their lives in terms of, you know, decision making towards becoming an entrepreneur or taking a certain career path. Knowing that you're able to actually inspire people towards excellence is mm -hmm. a really good feeling or a person that you interact with in, in banking, you know, when they come to you seeking financing, but you're able to pour in 
to them and, you know, give them other directions, you know, in terms of how they should consider things and level of risk taking and so forth. So I think those are things that I am proud of, being able to pour into person's lives and inspire and see the outcome, the fruit nice. of what you yes. consider to be your, your labor, you know? Right. Um, in terms of, I think you mentioned barriers now. Mm -hmm. What barriers there may have been. Um, I think sometimes people's preconceptions right. um, of who you are and what your abilities are, people tend to, to label you and those things can try to present themselves as barriers. But I think I've learned over time that in the end, your work is going to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. So I don't really stress or worry about um, other person's labels and trying to place judgment on me. I just continue to put forward hard work ethic. That's a success trait that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think as you work hard, it will speak, you know, for itself. You're right. It will speak yeah. for you. Absolutely. Speak, your work will speak for you. Yeah. And lessons. You spoke to lessons learned. Yes. Um, I think sometimes uh, I'm a very passionate person, but with that passion comes uh, a certain drive that I, I sometimes go into overdrive. So part mm -hmm. of what I've learned as a leader is that I'm not going to accomplish everything in one sitting. Right. You know, I have to know um, how to set specific goals and targets for particular days and know that tomorrow I will, you know, be back to, to fight the battle again. And one of my favorite mentors in the industry always reminds me of that, you know, Joy, you're a pusher, you're a driver, but there's always tomorrow. You're not going to, you know, conquer everything in one sitting. Lovely. So I've, learned, I've also learned the importance of having a solid team. When yes, yes, because, yes. You know, sometimes you, you have, you know, you have certain goals and aspirations, but it's important to have a great personal support team. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful to God that he blessed me with a wonderful husband, um, my son, my mother, and other immediate ma members of my, you know, right. circle right. that are supportive to me. And I have the support of a wonderful board of directors and mm -hmm. a management team here at the bank, as well as my national bank family. And I call them family because mm -hmm. I feel like they are my family away from home. So right. I'm very sincere when I speak to them or refer to them as, you know, my national bank family. Nice. Very okay. nice, Joy. I mean, you've, you've already given us quite a few what I like to call nuggets or, you know, um, beads of inspiration, right? Um, but I'm, I'm going to ask very directly, and then I, there's actually something that you said that I want to come back to, but okay. I suspect it may come out again. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to go back to it. What okay. advice would you share with young women entering a male-dominated field? Hmm, that's a good one, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would stress the importance of investing in yourself. Mm hmm um, oftentimes, now don't get me wrong, first impressions matter. And I, I want to look nice and present myself well. Right. But oftentimes I find that young women spend so much effort in terms of their physical appearance, mm -hmm. but they don't put that same effort into preparing themselves mentally. Right. You know, I've had so many experiences where I felt like young ladies showed up to, to interviews and, you know, I can tell that they put a lot of time into their physical appearance, but they didn't invest in being mentally prepared, you know, nice. to, put, to put themselves forward. So right. I speak very candidly. If you can spend an hour on YouTube learning how to cut your crease and, and, and you know, perfect your brows. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> there are several free webinars out there. You can spend, you can put hours into learning how to stop market works, learning how corporate right. finance work, how the Fed works, you know, rate setting, how the treasury functions. If you really want to make, you know, a solid step forward in the banking industry, you have to invest in yourself and put the time into self-development. Yeah, I also absolutely. Would, would tell them to, to, you know, carry themselves with respect. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Don't let others respect, disrespect you and, and label you and put you in boxes. You know, once you invest in yourselves and opportunities arise, you'll be able to, to, to put yourself put yourself in a place to take advantage of those opportunities. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So, you know, you keep saying things that I just want to elaborate on, but I know we're, we, we have a time limit. Um, I, I have I'm time, suspecting. Wendy. I got time. Okay. For you. All right. So let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> let's time the punches. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, so you spoke about hard work and, and I hear that and I hear branding, right? Uh, oftentimes we see how people have aspired and, succeeded in their aspirations mm -hmm. 
but they don't look stressed and they don't look tired and they're smiling and happy all the time. So we think, you know, this gotta be easy. Like I can do this. I can wake uh, up to anything. Mm-hmm. Would that be the truth of the situation or, or what goes into it? And, and, and how does that shape you? Well, you know, the challenges are going to make you stronger. To be honest, Wendy, there's no perfect outcome. And just because you are, you're multitasking and carrying a lot of load, you don't have to show it on your face. Right. I, I believe in exuding joy. Um, I come to work every day and I put in 100% and more. Mm-hmm. And there are days when I am tired. There are days when I'm exhausted. I'm mentally drained. But as long as I feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose, I'm going to always address it with a certain level of passion, there you go. energy, and joy. Because at the end of the day, it brings me fulfillment. You know, right. I would never continue in a career path if I don't feel like it's, you know, fulfilling or where I should be and I can be of assistance to other persons, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think it's important that we are real about the fact that it is, you know, it's a stressful job. Mm-hmm. Being a CEO is not an easy, an easy thing. It's, a, an easy, it's sometimes very a hard, heavy burden to carry. But I'm not going to walk around with it show on my face, you know? I will strike a balance um and that home work life balance is very important in terms of de-stressing mm-hmm. you know but yeah so carry forward with joy excellent you know? the joy contributes to your strength it you know, does it really yeah. does and then um you spoke also about mental preparation. So, and, and you took me into this next question, which, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. You created that. <laughs> <segment for me. laughs> How do you maintain your work-life balance? Because we keep hearing a lot about work-life balance and we hear about mental health lately. I suppose yeah. COVID has added its own pressures oh. and its own uh, stresses. Um, and yeah. certainly, again, you know, the other, the other beauty, beautiful thing about having met you is I met you immediately on the heels of the passing of Uma. Yes. And so I know that you are having, I'm saying this to you, Joy, and I'm literally getting goose, goose, goosebumps. I think they call yes. it every running up and down my arms because- You have the sky over my head in some pictures. And exactly. You know what exactly. I went through. Yeah. Right. So I remember you going through, but I don't remember you going through, but I remember you sharing that with me. Yes. And you did it just as you're doing today with a beautiful smile on your face and with so Thank much you. positivity, right? Thank um, you. So how do you maintain that? when life throws you these curveballs, which incidentally must come? How do you maintain that? Well, the way I see it, Wendy, we're going to go through storms and trials in life. You know, those things are inevitable. But going through, you have to have the mindset that you're not going to go under. Right. You know, and that is the way I approach challenges. I am Mm -hmm. not going to go under. I am going to go through the fire. I'm going to go through the storm. But just as we did with Hurricane Irma, it, it just builds your sense of inner strength. Mm-hmm. You know, it reminds you that you are truly a resilient person. Now, you mentioned COVID. Hurricane Irma was different because right. at least with Irma, as devastating as it was, the end, seeing the yes, end. Yes, yes. Right. You know, you could see that construction is bouncing back and, you know, mm-hmm. you, you could see certain things in the physical so COVID for me has been like a blind, is an, inv- an invisible storm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you really yeah. don't know. Yeah. It seems to die down and resurrect. Right. You know? So it's very unpredictable. So it's been an invisible storm, but it has reminded us that we have to be able to adapt to change rapidly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the reality of what we're facing right now. Um, for me as a female leader, COVID has really hit home because I always want to, to express to the females, especially that work with me in the institution, that you shouldn't have to choose between being a mother and a hardworking, you know, valuable employee. And, and when do you know as well, because, you know, you have your children as well, um, so you can relate to certain things. So it's been very difficult to strike that balance with the daycares being closed and the schools being closed. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I am a mother before I am Madam CEO. So That's I right. had to, to reach down as best as I could to see how I could assist persons and, you know, figure out how we can work around certain circumstances so that the people that have um, significant home responsibilities don't feel like they have to choose between their career and their homes. Now, of course, there are limitations in terms of what mm-hmm. you can actually do 
right. and give, but I feel that within my heart, I have tried my best to adapt to the situation as it is. Fantastic. And and you've made, you've made a point that, again, hits home for me. I remember um, becoming a first-time mom, uh, and one of my, my then superiors said to me, um, you need to make a decision. It's either you're going to have a career or you're going to be a mom. Mm. And my son, who's 14 now, I said, well, actually, I don't think that I need to make the choice. I think that I can. That was very unfair. Yeah. You know, um, but, but it does show an evolution to an extent of, of how the industry has changed and the sensitivities that have come about. Yeah. Uh, because most people would hear that and not believe that this could have been a conversation only 14 years ago. It was only yesterday. Exactly. Um, but it, it had motivated me at that time as well to push myself a little harder. Yeah. Just to make sure that, hey, your response has to be founded in something. And so these, these challenges that come our way um, in whatever shape or form should ignite in us the passion that you spoke about to continue to forge yeah. forward, right? Um, and not, be, not allow it to daunt us in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. or to become our glass ceilings. And um, one of the things that I teach my children is you break glass ceilings. That's the only yeah. way, they, the only reason that they're there is to measure how far you've gone and what's next. That's yeah. it, right? So I, agree. I absolutely subscribe to that thought process. Um, let's go back onto the lighter side for a second, because I think I've given you some hard ones there for a bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little breather. All right. What are we likely to find you doing on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m.? <laughs> I probably should be exercising. That would be the political correct answer, right, Wendy? But, um, to be honest, at 10 a.m., I, I normally do the most of my grocery shopping Saturday mornings, but right. by 10 a.m., I would have been long finished. So I think you would most likely find me in the kitchen uh -huh. making pancakes. Nice. So I love breakfast tools. I love preparing breakfast. My husband loves banana pancakes and omelets, and my son loves plain pancakes and scrambled eggs. So on Saturday morning is when you have, you know, a little more time to put some more love into the, the breakfast making and, you know, sitting and eating together. So I think that's where you would most likely find me Saturday at 10 a.m. Very Next nice. Time. So I guess the, 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 the moral of the story there is you can actually cook as well as be a CEO. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, I love to eat too, Wendy, so I'm going to make sure I can handle myself enough in the kitchen, okay? <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. We'll have to figure out some way to incorporate some sort of cooking uh, at CAP Conference. I'll work on that. Okay. Uh, so from your perspective, do you think that the industry has really changed or evolved over the last, you know, few years regarding female professionals? We've spoken about it a bit. Mm -hmm. I definitely think I see change. Um, even if you look at older banking magazines on, you know, coffee tables, you would see images of women primarily taking minutes or taking notes or in some instances serving coffee. Right. Um, and let me be very clear about this. Nothing is wrong with those positions. I want to make that abundantly clear. If you are the secretary or admin yeah. support, let me say admin yeah. support, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or if you are someone's personal aide or assistant, do it with all your heart, do it to yes. the best of your ability. You have to learn to serve before you can lead. I strongly Fantastic. believe that. Mm -hmm. So being a, 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 a humble servant is very important. So do your work with humility, do it with pride, do it with excellence, but know that it's not the ceiling. There you it's go. not your end all. What I have a problem with Wendy is persons that, for example, attend meetings and have been in, um, you know, admin support positions for extended period of time and, and they take notes and they file certain documents. And my question is, how do you feel about filing a document for 10 years and you have no idea what the document represents? Mm -hmm. I think that we should all have something in us that wants to understand the underlying concept behind what we do. You know, you're working somewhere. Yes, you're responsible for record keeping and having efficient persons in those posts is critical to organizational success. But mm -hmm. at some point you have to dig deep within and want to understand if I'm filing in a bank, I want to understand what a promissory note is, what a charge document is, you know, what are these legal terms that you know form these documents so you have to ask questions mm -hmm. you have to position yourself so that when opportunities arise 
you are well prepared to take those seats because at the end of the day, you do need to tell yourself that you deserve a seat around the actual decision making table and not just the note taking table. Fantastic. I love that. Um, and I think curiosity is, is exactly what you're speaking about. Don't be content. Always when you've, when you've jumped onto this leaf, mm -hmm. be prepared to leapfrog leapfrog onto the other one but you must exactly. be curious about it like how did you get here and what's the depth of the water and so yeah. understanding the industry beyond what you're doing now um but again you know it comes back to what you said one of your your success factors or your traits are and that's the passion yes you have to be eager to learn i mean there's so much out there and mm -hmm. let me clarify that too when i say being eager to learn it goes beyond um your formal education because mm -hmm. i have you know, I have two master's degrees and I have various certifications in banking and, and what's not, but I have learned so much from the man on the street. You know, mm -hmm. if we just take the time to, to sit down with persons and interact with persons to understand how life works outside of our corporate circles, we would realize that there's so much more to learn and there are different ways to learn. You know, it's one thing to have book sense, but if your common sense is limited, <laughs> so much you know how that goes, Wendy. So yeah, I believe yeah. it's important to have a good combination of book sense and street sense. So I Absolutely. learn outside of the books. I take time to talk um, with certain persons from different walks of life. And it helps to give me good perspective. And it contributes toward good decision making, you know, when you're taking judgment and, yeah. you know, yeah. input from different angles. Absolutely. You know, I listen to you speak, Joy, and... Um, you know, <clears throat> we have been, I would say, a fortunate uh, generation of women who are driven by passion to succeed and to accomplish perhaps more than would have been expected in the industry. Um, and, and perhaps the women before us would not have had an opportunity to speak with someone to understand their experiences and where they've been and where they've come from. Yeah. And this brings us a unique opportunity to continue to shape generations to come. Um, I, I don't want to take up too much of this time speaking about what's next after the Lady Leadership Series, but certainly we are looking at doing a mentorship program. Okay. Um, and of course, our first cohort of ladies who we will be using in this first iteration of the Lady Leadership Series will be our invited guests. Okay. I love the way that you speak about uh, getting the experiences and, and listening to what's happening beyond you. Uh, yeah. and beyond your immediate role as part of your growth. So I'm hoping that when I come knocking on your door and you know that I do that with no shame. I'll be willing and ready, Wendy. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> you That's have my full support. For. No, and Thank CAP you. has been very good to me. I'll be very honest. And, you know, when I started coming to CAP conferences, I actually got a lot of inspiration as well from some of the strong ladies that I met through the CAP circle. You know, nice. I mean, I don't want to call too many names, but there were the Marys and the Joannes. Yes, yes. There several persons that really jumped out to me because I appreciated their vibrancy. Yes, you know? yes. But I, I am a, I consider myself a very jovial person mm -hmm. and I was able to relate to them, but I still was able to see the level of impact that they had in their community, yes. the level of professionalism and their ability to represent us as women and represent us in international platforms mm -hmm. on behalf of the Caribbean region. And those things really also help to inspire. So if I can yes. help to inspire in the ways that, you know, people in my industry circle have inspired me, I'm more than happy to, to give. Fantastic. And, and one of the things that I have to say is we do it with a, a touch of femininity. Yes. So there still <laughs> remains a distinction between lady leaders and our gentlemen counterparts. Yeah. Um, despite the fact that we continue to work very well together to ensure that the, the economies are held safe, you know, and, and remain resilient and building. Yeah. So tell me then, how do you encourage and empower your team for success? What are some of your, your best practices? Share a little sum sum. Uh, let me think now in terms of my team encouragement. I think it's important that um, we celebrate small milestones and successes you know especially for banks you have your strategic plan document and you have you know these organizational goals and sometimes things seem so far away and so hard to to, to get to but if we celebrate small successes i think it helps mm -hmm. um when you hit milestones along the way right. to encourage one another and say you know if we got to step one we'll get through this together mm -hmm. um for me 
recognizing the strengths within the members of my team is very important to me because mm -hmm. if I can recognize the strengths, I can also build upon their strengths, which, you know, builds team cohesion and helps right. us achieve our, our goals in a much um, more efficient manner. Mm -hmm. I think also for me, in terms of team encouragement, I don't micromanage. Right. Um, if you're on my team, you're here for a reason. So you, you already come with a certain set of, you know, core competencies and a certain skill set. So, you know, you're on my team for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have to yeah. have a certain level yeah. of confidence in you. Yeah. So I hold my team members accountable. Um, I empower them by giving them the ability to make decisions. If you teach people and you learn from each other and you have faith and you claim to have faith in their abilities, you have to enable them and empower them by allowing them to make decisions. And for me, integrity is big. Mm -hmm. So once I am confident in the fact that you have used, you've relied on your best judgment and your decision making is one of integrity, I will support you even if it was done in my absence. Nice. Fantastic. Fantastic. Joy, we are coming really, really close to the end of your interview, but there are a couple I'm just of getting comfortable when we go. I know, I know. <laughs> We're going to have to plan part B of this, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So earlier you mentioned that you've had really good mentors um, and you, I know that your thought went to someone in particular. So now yes. why don't you tell us who inspires you and why? Um... I, I get a lot of inspiration from different persons in different mm -hmm. aspects circumstances. of circumstances. Right. Yes. Um, but I think if I have to highlight one person, um, right now I would highlight my mother, my mother Perlis. Mm -hmm. I am her only child and we are very different personalities. Anyone that knows my mother, she's very reserved, very mild mannered and, and, and somewhat quiet. I am the you know, bubbly, more outspoken, go in the yes. crowd, trying to meet everybody. I'm that person. So she often labels me as her little bulldog, you know? We're kind of on, you know, different ends right. of the spectrum. But right. nonetheless, she inspires me because she's always encouraged me. Mm -hmm. uh, from a very young age, literally, I felt like I could achieve whatever I set out to do. Fantastic. So her inspiration comes from this, the, this, the sense that she believes in me. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important to me. Um, she's a prayer warrior. She, you know, supports me with prayer daily. Um, mm -hmm. so I find great inspiration in, in the way that she has always taught me that I can be whatever I set out to be. I do deserve whatever I accomplish in life. And that encouragement has really inspired me. And I too have one child. I guess we're slow on that end, you know? Right. Yes, yes. I have one child. <laughs> So I, I hope that in the same way she has inspired me, that my teenage son gets that same sense of inspiration um, mm -hmm. from me to know that, you know, he is here for a purpose and can fulfill whatever he sets out to do, you know. Lovely. Miss Pullet, has, has a big shout out to Miss Pullet. I know yes. she's she with you at some point. Thank you, Miss Pullet. You did a fantastic job with this one. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. All right, great. So Joy, when faced with challenges, and I think you spoke about it throughout the interview, but let's see if we can get a really pointed approach from you. Okay. What are your go-to strategies or approaches to ensure that you get through it? Okay, if I'm facing a challenge when I believe it's important to hit the challenge head on. Nice. That is very important to me. I don't hide from challenges. If you hide from a challenge, chances are by the time you go back to it tomorrow, it's snowballed into another mm -hmm, challenge. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I believe in, in hitting challenges head on. Um, I tend to take a step back to assess the situation from different perspectives. Um, when looking at a challenge, I consider previous experiences and observations because the reality is that um, Wendy, there's nothing really new under the sun. <laughs> challenges come in different forms right but the reality is that if you have not faced such a challenge before someone in your circle has or yes. someone in the world has so you have to look at how you can rely on previous experiences and previous observations and you know determine what steps were taken then and what the outcomes were um to see what is the best approach for you to take and in the end make a decision Yes. I think an important part of being a leader is being decisive. 
Mm-hmm. You know, some people have a lot of, you know, very strong skill sets, but if you lack the ability to actually make a decision and go forward to execute, that's a big problem for me as a, in a leadership circle. So after assessing and, you know, weighing all your options, you make a decision and you, you stick with it, you commit stick to it, it and see it through. Yeah. And you just, you, you hope that you learn from whatever challenge you're facing so that, you know, when others come around, you can piggyback the same way, hit it head on. Lovely. Um, during the, the first, uh, the initial questions, you would have spoken about your support network and that yeah. that is a key part of your success. And it comes out again that you yeah. can tap into your success, uh, your support network. Yeah. Uh, and this question is, is one that's just coming to me now. Um, how do you determine the people that you surround yourself with? Because I think mm-hmm. as I look at some of our young people and I see tremendous potential out there, mm-hmm. sometimes I don't think that they actually align themselves correctly to fulfill more than they thought that they could be. So talk to me about a, a little bit about your own, um, how do you pick the people that you surround yourself with? That's a very important question, Wendy. Mm-hmm. I mean, in life, especially in this industry, you're going to have a lot of associates. I think we need to differentiate between who will be your associates yes. and who will be your actual friends in mm-hmm. your inner circle. And it, it's important that, and I'll speak to ladies especially, um, since it's a ladies' leadership yeah. that we're speaking to. It's important that you align yourself with women that are positive, that are goal-oriented, that are driven. Women that do not sit down and just discuss people. You know, you really have to examine your inner circle. I can speak for myself in that. I have had relationships with a very close circle of females, um, some of them going back to age 10. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what brings balance, you know, for me. Being able to, to rely on that feeling of, you know, that you can have a certain level of trust and confidence and get good feedback in terms of different paths you're considering taking in life and so forth. So your inner circle is, is very important. So I would say if you look at your inner circle and you don't find a sense of inspiration, if no one in your inner circle is actually there to support you and to speak life into your ideas and your projects and your visions, you may want to reconsider your circle. Yep. You know? I think that's something that people struggle with at every stage in life. Like, you know, mm-hmm. how do I recognize that this is perhaps not the best fit for me and where I want to be? How do I shed myself of that? But it's, it's yeah. perhaps one of the most liberating things that we should be doing, or it is. doing on a regular basis. We do need to check because what they give off is what we will eventually pull in. Exactly. Energy is a very real thing, Wendy. So I'm I'm happy you said that. And the reality is I have had persons in my life that, you know, I just didn't feel like it was the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. And it's no love loss with these persons, especially. Right. Um, But you have to learn who you need to love from afar Mm -hmm. versus who needs to be a part of your inner circle. Because the energy that, you know, you give and get in return is important in terms of how you will actually succeed and right. make progress in life so yeah yeah it's very important to choose who you spend quality time with absolutely and and the mindset is also really important so you need to find people with a similar mindset so if yeah. i'm forward thinking then i can't be uh constantly trying to drag someone along with me especially exactly. if you're resisting it if they're <laughs> resisting it then you know maybe it's just yeah. not meant to be the part of their journey yeah. um, but i think being very positive particularly when you work in an industry where there are so many things that are happening. It's a, it's a really, really dynamic industry and it takes a lot out of you. So you need yeah. to replenish with very positive things or things yeah. that will keep you nourished. And I don't mean uh, the tummy. <laughs> I mean physically and I mean mentally nourished to keep going and to keep giving. Yes. You know, so so. I, have, I have been blessed, Wendy. I, I must say that I'm an only child. As I said, I'm my, my mother's only child. But I have been blessed with a great circle of women. Nice. You know, that I can really pull positivity from and their, you know, their aspirations encourage me. I celebrate with their victories. And, you know, as women, we have to be able to celebrate one another's victories. And you can tell, you can feel, you know, and ladies, let us le- lean on our ability to, to discern. You can tell if you're in a circle and you have a victory 
and yeah. someone is not celebrating with you. You can with feel you, it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so don't be afraid to, you know, shed the extra weight as you need to do so. You know, people that are going to be in your circle need to be there and, you know, be supportive of your initiatives mm -hmm. and likewise, you know, give you constructive criticism when yeah. need yeah. be. But yeah, it's important, important that you can rely and, and have faith in the, you know, genuine nature of that circle. Yeah, your, your circle of trust is, is really important, um, important, especially as you begin to move forward in life. So, yeah. so ladies, this is really good information that you're getting here and, and things that you need to be checking. Um, you know, am I checking everyone who's in my circle? Are, ah. they pulling for me? Are they pulling for me? They need to be rooting for you. And that's yeah. part of the reason why this whole, you know, lady leadership forum was even conceptualized because there is so much wonderful stuff happening around us. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it is being pioneered by us. And for those of us who are pushing someone to their successes, that's also something to celebrate, yeah. right? Um, and so we thought, why not shine a spotlight? Uh, gentlemen, please pay attention to this because you're up next. We are going to come to you. We're not going to leave you out. Um, but we, all, we believe that within these circles and within the walls of our financial services sector, it takes everyone's efforts to move us forward. So... Here we go, Joy, as we ask your last question. Uh, this is a big one because I know that you probably have quite a bit to share uh, and we'll find a way to, to vent all of it. Okay. But for you right now in this moment, what advice would you give to the next generation of female leaders for their success? Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would I give? I would want to underscore the importance of investing in yourself. I can't say that enough. Um, self-development is very important. So I would say, you know, read as much as you can read, study as much as you can study, um, you know, find inspiration from women of like minds that want to learn, that want to advance, you know. So I would say invest in yourself. Um, carry yourself with respect in order to receive respect that's very important mm -hmm. um, because first impressions are lasting so you present yourself well but you have to consider what goes beyond what we see right when you open your mouth yes what do we know yeah. is yeah. the impression going to last when you actually have to speak mm -hmm. so i would say in terms of lady leadership being able to articulate um, and communicate well are critical components or critical, you know, parts of being a strong leader. Mm -hmm. um, I would say to women that you don't have to choose. You don't have to choose between being a wonderful wife or mother and friend and being a successful career person yes. or entrepreneur. Yeah. I would say you don't have to choose. You can still love, you can still live, you can still laugh. I really love to laugh when there's, you know, <laughs> we you know can that. love, you can live, you can laugh while you lead. Yes. You know, Absolutely. don't let anyone make you feel like you have to choose between those things. Women, we are strong, we are resilient, and we can be all of that and more. That's right. That would That's be my, right. my final words of encouragement. And Fantastic. I have gotten such great um, encouragement, even within the banking industry, within the Virgin Islands region, and like I said before, within the Caribbean as a whole. We have lots of great role models. And I can speak, I'm a very proud Virgin Islander. And I can speak to the fact that there are a lot of strong women who have gone before me um, and set examples of how to succeed in balance. And I'm grateful for their impact on my life. And if I can do anything to inspire some young women in the next you know, generation to come, then I would have served my God-given purpose. Lovely. So, Lovely. <laughs> Fantastic. I think that's, that's actually a fan fabulous note to end our formal interview on, but there is one more question because this has to keep, this must be living, right? Our lady leadership doesn't just end when okay. we've exhausted the many women who are doing <laughs> wonderful things in the financial services sector. So right. my question to you then is outside of, of our sector, if there was one lady who would really get your attention on a program like this, who would it be? 
and why. Ah. <laughs> so many to choose from Wendy. I know, I know. Think of the standout one who you would really love to, to hear from. Let's see if you can challenge me to do something beyond my reach. <laughs> outside of banking, outside of banking. Oh my, Wendy, it's, it's hard to pick one. Huh? <laughs> For some reason, so many people that have already passed on are, are, are running through my mind right now. <laughs> like I said, okay, let's make it reachable then. Let's make it reachable. <laughs> um, I think it would have to be someone, I probably can't give one particular name right now, but if I had to pick, it would have to be someone in the education field. Okay. Um, if I had to go outside of banking, mm -hmm. because teaching for me outside of feeling at home in the banking world, I have always felt at home in the classroom. So I don't know that I could pick just one, Okay, but it would have to be a female that has had a stronghold in education in the region. Lovely. Okay. I can work with that, Joy. I can work with that. I'll get you to sign off before I get up. Okay. Um, and I, I can I, probably get, get back to you with some actual specific some names, names, right? But definitely an educator because we often overlook, you know, the importance of yeah. the, 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 the impact that our educators have had. Of course. Of course. Oh, I so feel I you. They should be I feel you with that one. Absolutely. I feel you with that one. Like you, I have had a, a past uh, where I was a teacher as well okay, um, at 16. So I, I totally get this and I'm really happy that we get an opportunity if we are able to find a pioneer um, yeah. and hear their story because, you know, without them, where would we all be collectively and the exactly. generations yeah. that we have brought forth as well, right? So I'm with you on that one. A lady leader um, in education. Make it happen. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. <laughs> So Joy, this ends our interview and thank you so much. Um, I, can't, I cannot say that you've disappointed me in any way, shape or form. It was really a joy putting this list of ladies together um, because I, I think I have a sense of what every one of you will bring to the table. Um, there's a lot of joy being exuberated. There's a lot of um, positivity. And I think that in itself speaks to why you have come to the places that you have come to collectively. Um, and what we can continue to look out for from all of you as we as we continue on our journey and our path. So thank you so much for being available. I know that the CEO's time is a very expensive one. <laughs> yes, and I'm not billing you, Wendy. See, oh, yeah. <laughs> you knew where I was going with that one. <laughs> yes, but in all seriousness, I also want to say a great big thank you to Cab for considering me to be featured for something so special. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to have this discussion with you. And I hope that whatever little tidbits I've shared have been impactful and will, you know, inspire some lady out there. So I have absolutely having... no doubt that it will. And uh, I am sure that everyone can continue to look forward to Joy's participation. Yes. Um, as we know that we have tremendous support from you and uh, yes. we look forward to our continued engagement. Joy, thank you. And let me wish you and your team every success as you thank continue. Thank you very to much. And All right. To Wendy. Absolutely.
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you and your team. Take okay. care, okay? Bye-bye.